parish family of St. Hilda's Anglican Church Fairbank welcome you to join us in this time of worship and fellowship. The, we call this uh, devotional time, Bite and Sip. May you be blessed as together we share in this time together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is a good place for it. This is a good day. Here and now we come to reset our sights on the love of God. God is ready and willing to change our minds, unscramble our motives, and to focus again our purest longings. This is a good place for it. This is a good time. Here and now, we are in the presence of amazing grace. God is ready and willing to bring hope to the disconsolate, refreshment to the worn and weary, and a new delight to those who walk in the way of the Lord. This is a good place for it. This is a good day, here and now. We lift our hearts in devotion, we lift our lips in prayer and praise. We lift our minds in expectancy. We lift our lives in service. God, most merciful, God, most holy, receive all we offer you today. And may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. God of, of Christ Jesus and our God, Lift us above the, main, the mundane to the special, beyond empty platitudes to sincere praise. And awaken us that adoration, which is the joy of loving hearts. You are the God of grace and glory. We are yours, and by miracle, you are ours. Blessed be your name in all the earth. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. You, loving God, are the ground of our being and the river of life. You steady our roots and draw them to seek the living waters. You are like the sunlight enticing us taller and like the breeze rustling our leaves. You are with us through hard seasons of summer heat. In the winter season, your love warms and sustains us. You are everything to us. Oh, let our gratitude be great. Let our praise be plentiful. Let our worship be wonderful through Christ Jesus, your ever living Son. Amen. Our responsive reading is Psalm 1. Happy are, Happy they are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. For their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate night and day. They're like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And our scripture reading is Matthew chapter 13, verses 53 to 58. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. He came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue, so that they were astounded and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these deeds of power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without on except in their own country and in their own house. And he did not do many deeds of power there 
because of their unbelief. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, at this hour, you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all mankind may look to you and be saved, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. On Friday, the church remembers St. James of Jerusalem, brother of our Lord. St. James' story is worth our telling. Both Matthew and Luke speak of James and refer to him as the brother of Jesus. The church asserts that Jesus is both human and divine. Perhaps for some it is easier to reflect on the divine side of Jesus and either to forget or diminish the human side. Both the Apostles and the Nicene Creed of our church state that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary and was made man, human. Jesus, until the age of 30, lived a regular human life. He was part of his family, played with other children, developed motor and psychological skills, grew to adulthood, learned and practiced the carpenter's trade. Until his baptism at the age of 30, Jesus did not manifest the divine side of his being. Although at the age of 12, Jesus astonished the learned temple leaders with his knowledge of Holy Scripture and his insights into the nature of God. The writer of St. Luke's Gospel account states that, that this after this incident, Jesus returns home in Nazareth and was, quote, obedient to his parents. For those who are members of a large family, it is apparent that each member of the family is unique, having special gifts, certain personalities, certain ways of relating to each other. We can speculate on how members of Jesus's family regarded him. Did anyone besides Mary and possibly Joseph suspect that Jesus was the Messiah? Mary remembered the visit of the angel Gabriel her unusual pregnancy, the meeting with her relative Elizabeth, and the presentation in the temple with Simeon and Anna. Luke tells us that Mary pondered all these incidents in her heart. Joseph remembered the visit of Gabriel to him as he discerned Jesus' conception and Jesus' birth. He too was in the temple with Mary when Simeon and Anna recognized Jesus as the Holy One the promised savior. Those revelations were though not given to other members of the family. Jesus to them was their brother. James could recall life at home with its mixture of joys and frustrations, hurts and healing. According to Luke and Matthew, James was one of four. Dean Herbert O'Driscoll wrote a lovely book entitled For All the Saints, in which O'Driscoll creates an appealing narrative in which he meets and speaks with the saints. He writes of an imaginary conversation with James about Jesus. James tells of his ordinary childhood in Nazareth. In adolescence, James says some change was noticed in Jesus, who was quieter, would go off alone but still was part of the family, ready to do what chores were given him and accept responsibilities, especially after Joseph, the father, had died. James remembered that there was a special bond between Jesus and Mary. The change in relationships changed when Jesus embarked on the public chapter of his life, his preaching and his healing. Perhaps either Perhaps people either loved Jesus or were suspicious, and some were even hostile. The family experienced the, the public's reaction. They were very worried about the hostility of the temple authorities. As Jesus was drawing crowds down by the lake in Capernaum, the authorities asked Mary to use her influence as his mother to tone down his preaching just a bit. James and his family tried to do this. 
When Jesus was told of their being outside to see him, Jesus replied that anyone who followed him was his mother, sister, or brother. James was furious and began to distance himself from Jesus. After Jesus was crucified, his disciples claimed that he had risen from the dead, had appeared to them, and was then assumed up into heaven. James had not that revelation until Jesus appeared to him, and then James knew that Jesus, his brother, was the one, the Messiah. James became a leader in the Jesus movement in Jerusalem. One might say of James that he was a religious conservative, an observant Jew who loved the tradition, the rituals, and the rich heritage of the Jewish faith. But the Jesus movement was moving beyond Jewish, Jewish converts, and people like Barnabas and Paul were reaching out to Gentiles. James would wish that the Gentiles would embrace Judaism along with the belief in Jesus as Messiah. James was regarded as a fair and responsible leader. As James grew in an understanding of the largeness and inclusivity of the gospel, he gave his consent to blessing Paul and Barnabas in their work with Gentiles. And the gospel message continued. The religious authorities could manage a small sect of Judaism in Jerusalem, but not an expansive movement. They asked James, whom they respected, to put on the brakes. James did just the opposite. James was killed for it. And the Jesus movement continues to grow. And we who are part of it live with our own challenges. We struggle with our prejudices, our opinions, our likes and our dislikes. And like James, we too shall be visited by the Lord, who will enable us to keep the big picture of the grace and the power of God in mind. In the words of Bishop Gordon Light in this lovely new hymn, draw the circle wide, draw it wider still. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide. God, the still point of the circle, round whom all creation turns, nothing lost but held forever in God's gracious arms. Let our hearts touch for horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our loving know no borders, faithful to God's call. Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us, open every door. God bless us all as we do this. Let us pray. This is the prayer which is written for the Feast of St. James of Jerusalem. Let your people, O God, continually cherish the memory of James, who was a pillar in your church, supporting its witness to the resurrection, and grant that, following his example in the work of reconciliation, we may bring all who are at variance and enmity to peace and perfect unity in your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and people everywhere. God of surprises, continue to have mercy on your church. Let your spirit move among the ranks of its many denominations by your fire forged links of love, by your wind impel it into service for your world. Where it is in error, convert it. Where it is indifferent, we awaken it. Where it is corrupt, cauterize it. Where it is persecuted, fortify it. And where it is insightful, faithful, and loving, bless it with your holy joy. Let us pray for those people present among us or around the world who are doing it tough against heavy odds. 
God of high hopes and deep comfort, be with your well family for whom this day brings hardship, tragedy, sickness, road accidents, homelessness, or broken hearts. With your light to guide them, with your hand to uplift them, with your spirit comfort them, with your grace save them, with your love enfold them, with your peace garrison their hearts and minds against all evil. God of surprises, should any of us become switched off to the sufferings of others, should any of us retreat into selfish and safe preoccupations, confront us again with the cross. Deliver us, deliver us from either dithering or from rash actions and tutor us how to best be agents of justice and mercy. Through Christ Jesus, our hope and our joy. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That the world may know it is not hopeless and be assisted to raise the bar of its spiritual and moral expectations. We go in the spirit of Christ Jesus to see what needs to be done and to do it graciously, to accept what cannot as yet be done and to relax easily, and to help others to take courage without patronizing them. We go in the spirit of Christ Jesus. May the limitless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the indiscriminate province of our living God, and the comforting yet disturbing friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us today and forevermore. Amen. Just some announcements to share with you, just a reminder that every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon, we have noon, day, bite, and sip. Our Sunday services are at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. at the church. We ask you to kindly register by email, RSVP to stilders at gmail.com by telephone to Winston Coombs at 905-673-6436 or to Richard Goddard at 416-804-1951. Please note that the 10.30 a.m. service will be live streamed on YouTube. Following that, uh, on Sunday at 12 noon, we have online Sunday school program, Kids for Jesus. On Wednesdays at 10.30 in the church, we have the Holy Eucharist. And our next Bible study will be on Monday, October 26 at 7 p.m. Thanks again for the music, which we have been blessed to hear, Martin D. Groot, and for the choir of Grace Church in California. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be blessed, be a blessing.